feels like just a couple months ago that we were here yeah. talking about yet another top 10 Director's Cup finish, yet another Best in the ACC Director's Cup finish. Now it's time to do it all again. Another year of Tar Heel Athletics, and Bubba Cunningham's here with us, Tar Heel Athletic Director. Bubba, what are you, what are you excited about here in mid-August of 2022? Oh, I'm so excited just to have the students back. You know, I was at the convocation on Sunday night that uh, Kevin Guskowitz uh, hosted. Katie Hogue spoke, and it was absolutely tremendous. Mm -hmm. It was the first time we've had it in a long time back in the Smith Center. And so the entire lower side on one side of the arena was filled and then up in the upper deck. And so it was so much fun to have them back. And I think we're going to be really good this fall. I think between our soccer programs, volleyball program, field hockey, we have a, a lot of chances to win. And I tell you what, winning never gets old. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. To that point, it, it felt like it, it's been such a challenging couple of years for everybody due to COVID. It felt like basketball's run and, and baseball's run and the, and the championship for women's lacrosse. It just felt like it kind of brought every back, everybody back to, to campus and kind of fell back in love with, with Carolina. Did you feel that way? A hundred percent. Man, you kind of get goosebumps thinking yeah. about it. I mean, that last couple of months of the academic year was fantastic. You mentioned um, a couple of our sports, also golf, yeah. had a great finish to the season as well. And there's just an enthusiasm and a pride and to have people back. I do. It's been three years. So we had our all staff meeting just the other day and we were back in Loudermilk doing it. Last time we were outside in the Pope box. And so having everyone back, this sense of community, things that we talked about before, with COVID, we all went in our separate direction. Now everybody's back, and I cannot wait to get everybody back for all of our games. Because as I said, we're gonna have really good teams this fall, and to get the fans back is something I think is gonna be special for our teams. And the fans will be back in less than two weeks for Carolina football, a week zero game this year, Tar Heels at Keenan Stadium early. What are you excited about, about getting a, a real home crowd back at Keenan again? And, and what kind of feeling are you getting from football this fall? It's great. You know, we're, we are early. We're in week zero, but we're also back on campus and starting class August 15th. So it's actually good that we have an early game because I, and this may be the earliest we've ever started. I don't know. But having everybody back, and I was just talking to the football staff yesterday. The thing I love about college athletics are all the students being back. You hear the whistles at football, you hear the band practicing. They lit up the tower, the bell tower the other night. Those are the things that are so exciting. We've got the Marching 100 coming with FAMU as well. So it's gonna be a great day. We're doing a lot of things with the HBCU and a lot of their cultural events around this weekend. And I think it's gonna be a special weekend. So I'm sure hoping a lot of people can be here for the weekend, enjoy it, and then come to the game. Of course, August 27th, 8 o'clock in at Keenan Stadium. It's the second earliest kick date for Carolina football. Only in 2001, Carolina started at Oklahoma on August 25th, the only time that the Tar Heels have started earlier than this in a season. Uh, Why did so, I waste yeah, time? Yeah, sorry, Bubba, no big deal. What? Yeah, I know you know when the games were. When did the classes start? <laughs> you got me on that one. You got me on that one. Um, Bubba, this is your two now for NIL. We're, we're almost a, exactly a year from when NIL began last summer. How has it changed your world and college athletics world over this last 13 months or so? Well, it really has changed a lot for our coaches, for our students. And they're just like everything else, when you get into something new, there's a lot of great things about it. And many of our student athletes have had this opportunity to create NIL opportunities for themselves. They've gone out and found businesses. They've figured out ways to monetize their name, image, and likeness and help businesses succeed. And that's been fantastic. I don't think we anticipated quite the speed of which these collectives were developed. The idea of NIL is you go out and monetize your ability to do things for others. What we've seen with the collectives is we're collecting money and then trying to find individuals to give it to which is the absolute opposite of what it was. So it's a little bit bumpy and rocky, and the collectives do a wonderful thing for a lot of our students as well. It's just not exactly what we thought. I think one of our biggest challenges as we go forward is recruiting. You know, that's the one thing, or the one of two rules, you know, it's not supposed to be recruiting inducement, but we're unclear of how we're gonna try to navigate that space. We're the only sports organization in the world where the individual picks the team. Every other one, the team picks the individual through a draft, even in Little League Baseball or your high school that you go to, it's this, the community you live in. So this is unique and different. And so I think is what we have to begin to talk about is how do we try to get our arms around that, that recruiting process? You talked to us back before this even started and said, this is going to happen and we need to be prepared that this is coming. 
What kind of things did that enable the athletic department to be prepared to do for NIL? And what kind of things have you done recently that you think will facilitate in whatever way that you can this process for, for Tar Heel student athletes? I think we've done a really good job of educating our student athletes <clears throat> about what those opportunities might be and trying to create opportunities for them. The, uh, the North Carolina, the exchange program we have with Influencer, which matches up companies with individual students, I think is a great one. Providing services, le whether it's legal or not legal advice, but pointing them in the right direction for legal advice or tax advice. We've, we've provided great service there. This whole thing about collectives, we're, we are wrestling with that because the collectives are all outside of the university. All these individual deals for students are outside the university, but those are alumni and friends of the program that want to help. And so it's, it's an arm's length relationship with friends of ours. And so how do we try to make sure that they have the information they need and they can also develop relationships with our students to provide them opportunities in this space. And so it, it's been a challenge to, to navigate that space. And what we're trying to do is communicate what we are doing. Communicate it to our students, communicate it to the public, communicate it to the collectives and say, here's what you can and can't do, which is basically you can do whatever you want to do for our students, but let's do it in the Carolina way. Let's do something that we're comfortable with. Oh, the last thing on this topic, are the students more savvy in, in the marketplace at this point a year later? Absolutely. You know, we have 800 student athletes. Some of them are very savvy in the marketplace. Some of them don't want any part of it. And so it's all across the board. So, but the ones who have gone out there and created their own deals, they've learned a ton. And so all the things about running your own business, being entrepreneurial, all those skills that we wanted them to learn, a lot of them have. And I'm delighted for those folks. Um, the rest are somewhere in the middle. And, and that's probably what we would have expected. And so, as I said, there's, there's good and bad with it. And uh, I think the, the good has outweighed the bad, but I think there's a few things we need to really look at as we move forward. The transfer portal, recruiting, mm. we have to get our arms around that because right now that is a real frustration for our coaches. And I feel badly for the coaches that spend a lot of time recruiting students and doing everything they can to get them to come. And then all of a sudden they get frustrated they're not playing or there's a better deal somewhere else and they can leave so quickly. And so we, we have to moderate that. I think we could have said this exact same thing these last two summers when we <laughs> sat here. It feels like the big news in college sports this summer was some conference movement. What did you think as you saw all of that unfold and where does Carolina stand as we look at the landscape right now? Well, it, it was a little surprising, two years in a row. I mean, two of the major brands in two other conferences choose to go to a different one. But what I'm really happy with, the ACC is strong. The ACC is as strong as it's ever been. And we have 15 great schools, 14 that play all the sports, and then Notre Dame in with the Olympic sports and five football games a year. And we're in a great position. Now, financially, there's a gap, and we're gonna do everything we can to close that gap. Our, actually, the execution of incorporating some of those new schools into new leagues, I think will be a challenge for them. So I think the one thing about our league that I like the best is we're up and down the East Coast, and I think that makes a lot of sense. We, we're moderating how we're gonna change our uh, travel schedule for football, so we'll play teams more often. But I think our challenge as a league will be to continue to find ways to help ESPN and help ourselves close that revenue gap. And I think there's a lot of opportunity to do that. Well, I guess that, that was gonna be my, my final question. I know this is the million dollar question, quite literally. How does that, what, what are some things that can be done to, to close that gap? Well, I, it, we're, we're a relatively new network. And so if you look at the advertising on the network, I think there's ways that we can help ESPN sell more advertising. I think we can be better partners with ESPN to try to make the thing more profitable. And once you do that, then everybody's gonna succeed. So we're, we're talking about ways that we can do that. Um, whether or not we change some of the program. You know, they have modified the programming a little bit. Are there ways for the schools to contribute more to the programming and maybe get more out of the relationship with ESPN on an individual basis? And I think that's another thing we can look at. Are there games that aren't being televised that maybe they would come back to the school and we maybe be able to put on a different platform? And I think those are ways to help both ourselves and ESPN. Look, no more Packer and Durham in the morning. Jones and Adam in the morning? <laughs> no, we maybe, needed maybe more after, money, Adam. We didn't need the network to get canceled completely. That's not Maybe afternoon. We're not real good from <laughs> 7 to 9. That's not our prime time. No. I'm just a little surprised you're keeping Jones in. It could be Adam and Adam. 
Well, what about Adam and Bubba in the morning? Uh, yeah, that's got some potential. Now we're talking. <laughs> Billions. <laughs> <laughs> we always have a great time catching up with Bubba Cunningham. We do it a couple times throughout the year. Of course, Bubba, so great and generous with his time. Bubba, great to see you again and look forward to talking with you again in a couple weeks. Appreciate it. Thanks for all the support of all of our student athletes. Thank you.